So in our game, the player can already take damage, but we have no way to heal the player. So a good way of doing that for a platformer would be to create a pickup item, which will instantly heal our player. So I'm going to jump into the art folder of our project, and we downloaded some icon packs in advance. So the free pixel food pack by Henry Software is going to contain a lot of good food items we could use for setting up our healing pickup. So let's jump into the food folder and you'll see that we have a lot of these little 16 pixel icons we can use for a healing item. So in the project reference, I was using a dragon fruit to heal the player, but feel free to choose any food item you'd like for your game. So I'm going to drag this dragon fruit into the scene, which is going to immediately create a game object with a sprite renderer attached to it. If we want, we can leave the name defaulted or we could call it something like health pickup to be a little bit more clear about what its purpose is. So now in the assets folder, let's create a new folder. I'm going to call it objects, and then we'll drag the health pickup inside of here to be a prefab that we can copy over and over again. On the prefab, I'll reset the position. Let's also double click into the prefab so that we can edit it. So if we want a item on the screen to be a health pickup, we're gonna need to create a custom script for that. So let's create a new component and I'll just call it health pickup. New script, create an add. In the assets folder, I'm going to move health pickup into the scripts. So like always, I'm going to bring the script from the assets root into the scripts folder with a drag and drop inside of the Unity project window. Now we want to open the script up for editing. So health pickup. So the first thing we're going to need in our health pickup script is going to be the amount we're going to heal. So I'm going to create a public int and I'll call it something like health restore. I'll default that to 10. Well, let's actually make it 20, be a little bit more generous. And uh, we can always, of course, customize this for each individual health pickup. We're not going to need an update method, but how we're going to heal the player is that we check when it walks onto a collider trigger zone. So we'll have to go back and add the collider in a minute. But for right now, we can do a void on trigger enter 2D. So first, let's check the damageable component on the collision. So damageable damageable equals collision dot get component damageable. And we'll check that that is actually valid to make sure that the character that walked in is on that layer. Now, as for filtering out whether enemies or players or any other type of character should be able to pick up the health pickup, we'll use the physics layers for determining that. So we just in the script want to make sure that the character has the damageable component. So on the damageable component, we need to call a healing method. So I don't think we've created it yet. Let's go into damageable. And similar to where we have public bool hit, Let's create one that's, let's say, public void for now, and I'll call it heal, passing int health as the parameter. So we do want to check if the character is alive. So a normal healing item wouldn't be able to affect a dead character. And if that's the case, then we'll do health plus equals the health value. To be a little bit more clear, I should actually rename this to be health restore. So we add the health restore to the health of the character. We don't need to change the animators or lock the velocity or anything, but we do want to call the heal event that we created in the other video. So under character events, we have character healed. So this is when we're going to call that. So game object and int for what parameters we pass through. So let's come out here and we're going to do character events dot character healed, passing the game object and the health restored. So that's how we'll get the UI manager to create the healing text, which we already actually set up as well in the previous video. So that might actually be all we need here for right now. So on the health pickup script, let's call the heal function. And we're going to get the health restore variable passed through. And then we want to destroy the game object. So a health pickup is only going to be able to be used once and then it just disappears. So to give a little overcap of what's happening, the health pickup detects that are damageable character walked into its box collider zone and then we're going to call the heal function on the damageable component when the damageable component gets healed we invoke the event character healed which means that any other components that have a function subscribed to the character healed event are going to run that function with game object and health restore as their parameters so in the ui manager we have character healed which is going to spawn the health text the difference between the health text damage text mostly just that the health text shows in green to show a positive number and then the damage text shows red to imply that the character took damage and then to make sure that that function gets ran we add our subscribing method character healed when the ui manager is enabled to the character healed event and we remove it on disable so that only a ui manager that's currently active can call those methods 
so now in Unity, we still need a collider in trigger mode. So I'm going to add a... Actually, let's do a circle collider this time, since the shape of this is kind of round. And we can actually just use the default values here. You can see the circle goes pretty well around the shape of the dragon fruit. So let's just set this to is trigger mode. And then we need to pick a layer for the health pickup to be on. So I suppose we could create a new layer here. I'll add a layer. Let's call this the pickup layer. So under edit project settings, physics 2D, the pickup is only going to be able to interact with the player layer. So let's disable everything else and then hit X, hit play to go into play mode. And let's jump into the fruit. So we get a 20 heal on the player. Now, one thing about that, though, is that our character, if we take a look at it, at the start of our script, it's already at max health. So we shouldn't be able to go above 100 for the health. And I'm going to argue that if we're not healing any damage, we shouldn't show that we heal damage. So I'm going to hit play, jump into this, and you can see that the health actually went above the max health. So we got to make a quick change to the damageable script. So let's go to the damageable script for our heal function. And instead of just adding directly to the health, let's change this up a bit. So the new health value is going to have a limit. So I want to have a, let's see, math f dot min function. So we take the lower of two values and the first value is health plus health restore. And then the cap value there is going to be max health. So what we're going to want to do here for the heal is to figure out the maximum amount we can actually heal the character. So let's create an int max heal. And that's going to be equal to max health minus the health. And I want to wrap this in a math f dot max function. So we'll get the higher of the two values. So the two values are max health minus health and zero. So if the health is equal to or greater than the max health, then this is going to return a negative value. And in that case, we want to default the max heal to zero because we can't heal the player above the max health, of course. And then when we add the health restore to the health, we want to take the lower of these two values. So the max heal will be our heal cap and the health restore will be the expected amount to heal. So let's do a math f dot min here, taking the lower of the two values. So that's max health and health restore. And I also want to use this actual value for the character events. So we showed the exact amount that we healed. So I will replace this with a variable one line up and I'll call this actual heal equals this. So the health is going to plus equal the actual heal. And then we're going to call the character healed with the actual heal value rather than the health restore. Okay, so I made a little mistake here. Max heal is supposed to be the min value here. So the minimum value of max heal and health restore. Let's go back into the game, hit play, jump at this, and we can see we healed for zero. So now let's hit play. I'll get hit once, jump into it, and you can see we heal for the 10 damage we were missing. I'll hit play now. Let's get hit at least twice. Okay, and now I jump into it and we heal for 20. So now the text responding to the health pickup properly shows the actual value that we healed for, not the min value. So now we can duplicate our health pickup all around our map as we choose. So if we select it and hit Control D in the hierarchy and then hit W to go into the move tool, we can just drag our fruit all over the map. So let's duplicate it again and I'll move one down here and we can duplicate and I'll put a couple more down here. Now. We go into play mode, we can jump into all of them, and uh, technically they're all going to work exactly the same way. But right now they're kind of static, it's a little boring when they don't do anything. So we can actually take these icons and animate them. So I'm going to do that in the health pickup script, we'll create a rotation variable, and then with the rotation amount we'll apply that to the transform of the object so that it keeps rotating. So let's create a public vector 3, and I'll call this spin rotation speed. And I'll set this to a new vector 3. I want to rotate on the y-axis, so I'm going to do a 0, 180, 0. Then we're going to need a uh, update function, so void update. And we just want to apply the spin rotation speed times the time dot delta time and apply that to the rotation on our transform. So the way you add a rotation value to the current rotation value is that you use transform.euler angles, and you're going to want to plus equal the spin rotation speed times time dot delta time. And I think that's all we need to make it spin. So let's go back out to the game. I'll click on our health pickups and you can see the spin rotation speed measured in degrees per second. Let's go ahead and hit play. And we'll see that our icons are rotating. The health pickups are rotating. 
uh, they still work exactly the same, being able to heal our player, or to be completely wasted if we happen to have not taken any damage. So one change we could make as a quality of life improvement for the player that's different from the reference project is that we can limit it so that we only pick up the health pickup when there's damage that actually needs to be restored. So to do that, we can add a Boolean to the damageable heal function. Let's go to definition. I'll call it public bool heal here now. And we'll return whether the character was healed or not. So the condition here is going to be and and health is lower than max health. So if that's not the case, we're not even going to try to heal the character. We're just going to come down here to the bottom and return false. But if we do heal the character, let's return true. And then on the health pickup, we can now use that boolean. So boolean was healed equals the results from the heal function. And then before we destroy the game object, we're going to check if was healed. Then we destroy the game object. So this means that a heal pickup, even when we collide into it, if it would be wasted, it won't be used. It will just remain on the screen for us to use later. So let's go ahead and hit play. I'm going to jump into it and you see nothing actually happens. But let's get hit a couple times. So we've taken some damage. Now I'll jump into it we get healed. I'll come back up here to the top one and we jump into it. No damage to heal so it doesn't get wasted. So that part is a complete personal preference option just if you want to be nice to the player and not have them waste their resources like that. Uh, but to show that it is working I'll temporarily set the max health to 200. Let's just jump into a couple of these. So we got that first heal and then down here we have a couple more. You can watch the health value on the inspector going up. So we're at 160 out of 200 max now. So it appears to be working correctly. And just to wrap things up, I'm going to reset the max health to 100. 